Thank you. Please take your seats. Before I begin my remarks, may I ask you to observe a moment of silence in tribute to our beloved former First Lady, Barbara Bush. My fellow Republicans, my fellow Utahns, my fellow Americans, thank you. It is an honor for me to welcome you today to the Utah Republican Party 2018 Nominating Convention. Thank you to the Maverick Center for hosting us. Their customer service has been exceptional. To those who have traveled from the far corners of the state, Welcome, and thank you for your sacrifice, not only of your resources, but your time. To everyone in attendance, your presence and participation are appreciated. Thank you. To those who are running for office, thank you for your tremendous sacrifice as you step up in the service of our state and our nation. We'd also like to recognize We'd also like to recognize your families and their sacrifice. A few days ago, a Southwest Airline flight departed New York LaGuardia en route to Dallas Love Field in Texas. About 20 minutes into the flight, at an altitude of 32,000 feet, the left engine failed catastrophically blowing out a passenger window, which resulted in the unfortunate death of the passenger seated next to it. Immediately, the plane lost cabin pressure. The yellow oxygen masks dropped. As you can imagine, the atmosphere in the cabin was panic, fear, and chaos. Fortunately for flight 1380, at the helm was Tammy Jo Schultz, a veteran, a Navy fighter pilot. It turns out I know a thing or two about being a fighter pilot. <laughs> We've since learned that a compressor blade liberated it itself from the engine. The cause of the liberation was determined to be metal fatigue. On its own, the term metal fatigue sounds innocuous. As we can see from this situation, however, it was the beginning of a terrifying ordeal. Had a less capable pilot been at the helm of that Boeing 737, the results most likely would have been utterly dis disastrous. Eleven months ago, I stood at the podium in a convention such as this, running to be your chairman. In my speech, I discussed the metal fatigue of our party. While I'm pleased to report today the party is operationally, fiscally sound due to the hard work of many and the overwhelmingly generosity of our don overwhelming generosity of our donors, we are still experiencing metal fatigue of a different sort. Abraham Lincoln stated that a house divided against itself cannot stand. He led our nation through a civil war, a war that ultimately cost the lives of 655,000 soldiers, a number, a total number, just under all other American conflicts combined. I can only imagine the collective sadness of our young nation at that time. We live in the most blessed and prosperous nation on earth. Warriors have fought and died for our freedom and liberty. Despite this, our nation is suffering metal fatigue. Our party is experiencing metal fatigue. It seems 
that we look for ways to tear each other down rather than to build each other up. We are divided because we choose to be divided. I stand here today to remind you, to remind all of us that we are better than this. We have been blessed with much. I am a believer that where much is given, much is required. Let us choose to lay down our sickles. Let us choose to move away from our keyboards. Let us choose to engage in doing good. Let us choose to put aside our differences and instead embrace that which unites us. Let us choose to work together. Let us choose to show the upcoming generation a better example. Today we are here to select nominees who will re represent us and the great state of Utah in our nation's capital. Let us choose those who will seek to relieve mental fatigue and fight for those ideals that make our nation stronger and better. Today, let us choose to remember who we are. Before anything else, we are friends, family, husbands, wives, fathers, mothers, daughters, and sons. As Barbara Bush said, may she rest in peace, politics is what we do. It is not who we are. Thank you.